Today on the Joy of Editing, I'll be exploring the Adjustment Brush in Photoshop Beta. They've added some new features since the last update. We'll take a look at those features and I'll give you some tips on how we can utilize them. The Adjustment Brush is not perfect yet, but it is heading in the right direction. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. The adjustment brush in Photoshop beta since the last update has had some really nice features added to it. I don't think it's quite there yet and hopefully they'll make some more improvements, but it's getting there. But let's get a look at it today. If you have Photoshop 2024, but you don't have Photoshop beta and you'd like to check out this new adjustment brush along with all the other new features in uh, Photoshop beta, find your Creative Cloud icon and click on it. And then make sure you click on apps and then you'll find Photoshop beta. Right now you can see mine says open. If I click on this, I would open up Photoshop beta. But if you don't have it, it will say install. You can install it. Just click on that. And then you can always remove it if you want to. First off, where do you find the adjustment brush? Well, it may be inside of your brushes group. If you'll notice, I have my brush tool right here. If I left click and hold, you can see there's a bunch of other brushes inside of here and you'll find it in there, or in my case, you're gonna find it outside of that group right here. What I basically did was, see the ellipse down here? I just right click on this, click on Edit Toolbar, and we have groups of different tools in here. See, here's the brush tools. My adjustment brush used to live inside of here. I just clicked it and drug it out. I prefer doing it that way. That way, I can just get it really easily. I don't have to click on this group and find it in here. I can just, find it right out here with the tools and just click on it and you'll activate the adjustment brush. And now if we come up to the file menu for the adjustment brush right here, you'll notice adjustment right now it's on curves. This is a drop down. If you click it, we have all these different adjustment layers we can work with now. So this is new. We have a lot more adjustment layers we can work with. You can subtract or add, you'll be painting on a mask when you use these brush tools. And then note right here, see this little triangle pointing down, click on that. You can adjust your size and hardness of your brush, change to a different type of brush. You now have an object selection tool that works with the adjustment brush. This is a great new feature and I'm gonna show this to you, it's really nice. Uh, you can toggle on or off an overlay to see where you've brushed. You can adjust the opacity and the flow of your brush right here and also, if you'll look right here, you see I have my contextual taskbar opened up. Now, it works also with the adjustment brush and it really makes it easy to use. And I highly recommend that you open up your taskbar and use it. Now, to get a contextual taskbar onto the screen, what you need to do is come to Window, click on Window and come down to the bottom and make sure you click on Contextual Taskbar. Make sure it's checked on and then you'll see your taskbar. It'll come up somewhere in this area here. And then what you need to do is you can drag it around and move it wherever you want. You can put it up here, over here. I'm just going to leave it here out in the open for now. But what I recommend is click the ellipse and click pin bar position. That way, every time you open up Photoshop, it'll be just where you've left it last. And then if you need to move it to another position, just come right here, click and drag it wherever you want it to go. For my personal workflow, I like to work from the taskbar, but you can easily work up here in the menu as well. Click plus to paint on the adjustment, click minus to subtract from the adjustment. And basically what you're doing is painting on a layer mask. I'll show you what I mean. For instance, let's go ahead and click this drop down, and I'll click brightness contrast. You don't see a brightness contrast adjustment over here. This is one thing I wish they changed. I wish that adjustment would automatically go over there and have a black mask with no adjustment. Now notice the subtract brush is selected. I want a plus add brush, so I'll click the plus. And what I'll do is as soon as I start to paint, watch what happens, you'll see an adjustment layer come. So I'm gonna paint like right across here. You see that? And there's the adjustment layer and I painted on the mask right there and they give you a preset value for brightness and contrast. In fact, most of these adjustments are all gonna have preset values, which I don't like because I would rather start from scratch. That's just me personally. I think they're trying to make it simple to give you an idea what these tools are gonna do, but if you're a seasoned Photoshop user, I don't think you would like that. Let me know in the comments section below what you think. Do you like the fact that these adjustment layers already have adjustments on them or would you rather them not have an adjustment? Leave me a comment and let me know. 
Now, I've made this adjustment across here. Now, you'll notice like right here, see where it says overlay? If you click this, you can see an overlay on there. Now, I don't believe you can change that overlay to a different color or different overlay opacity. Maybe that's coming. If you know of a way to do it, let me know in the comments section below. Now, let me give you a little tip here. Let me go ahead and get rid of this layer. I'm just going to drag it down to the trash can. Now, I still see my overlay here, and I do not know why. It's probably a bug. Let me go ahead and shut off the overlay. Now, I do want to point something out. The contextual taskbar, right now you don't see a plus or minus. So to start out painting on an adjustment, you would have to choose plus or minus right here. Right now I'm on plus and I'm at 100% opacity. So let's say we wanted to just paint the adjustment on with an overlay because you might like that because you can see exactly where you paint with the overlay. So let's click the overlay on and now you see the little check on there. And now at 100% opacity, you can see I'm painting on there. So we can see exactly where I'm painting. Now, you can vary the brush opacity to give a lower effect of adjustment. So right now I'm at 100%. Let's type my five key. That's the shortcut to go to 50% brush opacity. And now you can see the overlay is not quite as strong. So I'm 100% here. I'm at 50% here. Now to shut off the overlay, just come up here and click and uncheck that. And now you can see that adjustment, that preset adjustment, which I don't like. So what I would do, I would click this button to reset it. And now maybe I want to lighten that area up or darken it. I have my choice. I could do what I want. I can adjust the contrast. And again, this area right here will get most of the adjustment. This will get 50% of the adjustment. And now if I option click on this mask, you can see that is the mask. And all we're doing is painting on that layer mask. I'll option or I'll click the mask again and get back to the image. So that's all that we're doing here. It's very simple and it's stuff that we've done in Photoshop for years, but now they're trying to make it a little easier for us. But here's where I think the real power comes in with this new adjustment brush and we won't be using a brush. I'll show you what I mean. Oh, by the way, did you note after I added this brightness contrast layer, we now have a plus brush and a minus brush that appear in the taskbar, as well as add a new adjustment. I just wanted to point that out. So things will be changing on this taskbar when you do different things. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this layer by dragging it down to the trash can again, and we will start from scratch. And now you'll notice right here, I'm going to work from the taskbar this time. Now note right here, there's a drop down. I'm going to use a curves adjustment this time. So I'll click on curves. We don't get a curves adjustment layer over here yet, but I'm going to use this apply object. You can also click on this button in the adjustment brush menu to do the same thing to apply an object. So let's click apply object. And now note when I hover over the image, you can see different objects are being selected here. Okay. I believe this is the object selection tool. However, I'm still using the adjustment brush. So they are doing something behind the scenes here. I believe it is the object selection tool because my cursor looks the same as an object selection tool. So let's say, for instance, I want to select this horse right here. I can just click it and select it. And now I have this horse that looks really awful. It's way too light because that's where the curve is preset at. So I'll click this button to reset it. And again, I wish they would have this not set for us. I haven't made my curves adjustment yet. Now let's say I want to add some more horses. So I could come and click apply object or click this button right here to apply an object. Now this is important. We are on plus. If you are on minus, you would subtract a subject and I'll show you in a sec, but let me make sure I'm on plus. I am on plus and now I'll click apply object and now I can hover over this horse and click. And if you look at the layer mask, you can see it has been added to the mask. You notice I have a brush now. I have to come back up and click apply object again. And let's say I want to add this horse and now I have a brush and now I have to click apply object again. If I want to add another horse, like say this one and now note my layer mask over here, you can see I have all those horses. Now, if you want to subtract a horse or any object, click the minus brush button. I know it sounds kind of weird, right? But you want to click the minus brush button and then click apply object. And then if I hover over this horse and I click, it will now be subtracted from the layer mask. And if I option or I'll click the layer mask, you can see it. See, it's been taken away. It left a little bit of residue there. I'm still in subtract mode, so I can just with a smaller brush, Right now I'm at 50% opacity. I'll type my zero key to go to hundred and I can 
paint that off. You see that? And now I can optional I'll click on the layer mask again and see my image back. And now let's make an adjustment. And now with my curves adjustment, I'm going to click this target tool. And what I'll do is I'll click right here and maybe darken this horse down, which will in effect get all three of these horses, right? And then I may want the mane of this horse to get a little lighter. So I'll click right here and you'll notice I have a point right here now, right? So you just click and I can drag this up just a little bit. And all those lighter tones that are represented on the curve will get lightened up. So now let me shut this layer off. Here's before and here's after, but it's affecting all three of these horses. So that's pretty neat that we can work with object selections. After I use the curves target tool, I no longer have my adjustment tool selected. So I'm going to click on it again. And let me show you something else. I want to add a new adjustment. And here's a button right here to add new adjustment. Now, don't get fooled here. If you click this drop down and you change this to something else, you will change this adjustment layer to that adjustment you pick from this list in the drop down. So don't do that. If you want to add a new adjustment, you must click on add new adjustment and now pick one. In this case, I'm going to click a photo filter and it defaults at a warming filter at that percentage for density. This is one of the rare times I do want it. I just want to warm up this top area. Okay. Cause there's a lot of warmth in this image and I'm at hundred percent opacity. I'm just going to use that and I'm just going to paint that on here. Okay. I'm going to stay away from this area, but I'm just painting it on at hundred percent. Now I'll go over the horses a little bit here because I want to get down in this area here and I'll show you how we can fix that. It's really cool. So there we go. I've painted all that in. And now let me shut this layer off. Here is before and here's after. Now, if I want more density, I could take this slider and drag it to the right and, and give it more density. And let me do that just for the sake of it. Now, bear in mind, I'm just making some adjustments on this image. This is show you how this adjustment brush works. It may not be the adjustments I would actually use on the image. And I know I painted on these horses heads a little bit. So if I shut this layer off, you may or may not see it. I'm going to shut this off. Here's before and here's after. There's a little bit of warmth in the head and it doesn't look bad, but let me show you if you didn't want that, how you could correct it. We're still on this photo filter layer. We could click the minus brush, click on apply to object and hover over this horse. Click to select it, click apply object again, hover over this horse, and now we've deselected it. Now, if I option or I'll click on this layer mask, you can see those horses have been subtracted. So that's a pretty cool little tip for you. And now if you option or I'll click, you can see the image back again. So you could subtract objects from these masks, add objects, whatever you want. Now, remember when I told you just a little bit ago, you have to click add new adjustment to add a new adjustment. You can't click here because if I click here and say use black and white, you'll notice that area turns black and white. I'll just do a command or control Z to back up a step. One other thing I could have done rather than just click add new adjustment here is I could have went up here into the menu for the adjustment brush and clicked black and white. And I'm just using black and white just to show you. And now if I paint on the image, I'm painting black and white right there. You see that? So remember, you can add a new adjustment by clicking this button on the contextual taskbar, or this drop down is the same as adding a new adjustment up here. Okay. In other words, it won't change it on the layer, but on the contextual taskbar, this drop down, whatever you choose here for an adjustment will change this adjustment layer to whatever adjustment you click on. And that could be very handy if you wanted to change it. I don't need this layer, so I'm going to drag it down into the trash can. I like this adjustment brush in Photoshop beta, but I think it needs more work. What do you think? But I like the direction that it is going. I really like the fact that we can apply to objects. I like all these new adjustments they've given us here. I think we had about four adjustments we could use in the previous update, but you know, now we have all these extra ones and more is always better in my opinion. But wait, one more thing. I almost forgot to tell you this. If we come to the contextual taskbar, we're using the adjustment brush. If you click the ellipse, you can invert the mask. You can load it as a selection and then use one of your adjustment layers in Photoshop. And that'll add that mask to that adjustment. Or you can click this button to reset the mask. It'll change it to a white reveal all mask. And then you can invert that back to a black mask if you want to paint on it, apply an object, whatever you want to do. 
Well, there it is, everyone. I hope you enjoyed my exploration into the adjustment brush and the latest update of Photoshop Beta. Hey, if you enjoyed today's tutorial, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Click all so that you receive all notifications. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.